I'd like to share a story of two deaconesses um, which I had in previous church, one of the previous churches. They were decent people and they really liked to serve in ch different church settings and they were diligent. And one day I found out that um, they didn't believe in Jesus Christ. Did it shock to you? Right? They were baptized and they were ordained as deacons and deaconesses. Um, but I found out that they, they claimed, Oh, I don't believe in Christ. And I asked them, then why did you get baptized? And they said, Oh, because the pastor uh, asked us to get baptized. Oh, uh, all right. And not only two of them, there were like a seven, eight people. And when pastor made an appeal to get baptized, then no one raised their hand and they felt sorry for the pastors. So they, ah, oh, it's not good after studying Bible for a long time. No one wants to get baptized. So who will get baptized? Even though they were not really accepted just as their personal savior. And I asked them again, then, why did you get ordained as deaconess? And once again, they said, because pastor asked us to be deaconess. Um, this incident made me to think about the church. What's the, what's the meaning of being a member of the church? And what's the meaning of being ordained as a leader or dedicated as a leader in the church? And, and ultimately, what the church is. Now we are, in the, we are sitting in the church right now, right? We're in the, sitting in the church. And do you know what church is? I mean, what church, which church we are sitting on? Now I'm not asking the building, but do you know what church is? The Bible used the Greek word ecclesia uh, for the church, but it means a called out assembly. Did you get it? A called out assembly. That's the meaning of ecclesia. But the word church we use is not translation of ecclesia, unfortunately. But a kuriakos, which means belongs to the Lord. That I don't know why they began to use different tongues. Um, as they translate into English. But they use different words for the church. But even though it was mistranslation, but if we combine them together, Ecclesia and uh, Curiacus, it makes perfect sense for the church. So church is the called out assembly of New Testament believers that belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. Does it make sense to you? Right, church is not a building, right? It's not a building located in a certain place. But church is a called out assembly, people of New Testament believers that belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. And furthermore, Paul described the church as the body of Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27, he says, Now you are the body of Christ. Now he's talking about the believers. That I said that it's the believers. Assembly is the church. So now you are the body of Christ. The members individually. So if you recall the last week's sermon, which I preached about John 17, uh, we can understand where it called out from. I said, a called out assembly. So where did they called out from? From the world. Right? They were called out from the world. And they were called out to be sanctified as a part of the body of Jesus. And after that, after sanctification, they were sent out to the world to preach the gospel. So that's the church. And based on this norm, we can define church as 
and churches individuals who are called out from the world to join to Christ to be used for accomplishing God's work on earth. So that's the, the, the definition I could bring up with uh, the word ecclesia and with uh, the word of Jesus Christ. So that's the definition of a church. And I said God's work. What is God's work? And the book of um, the Acts of Apostles describe the work this way. The first chapter of the Acts of Apostles, the church is God's appointed agency for the salvation of men. It was organized for service and its mission is to carry the gospel to the world. And one common problem of the church today is participating and leading church programs and activities without being connected to the body of Christ. So as I explained last week and this week again, if every individual is not connected to Christ, the church is the body of Christ. If every individual is not connected to the body of Christ and still doing church service, that's the one common problem uh, in our generation today. Let me briefly recall the parable of the prodigal son. How many of you know the story of the prodigal son? Okay, those who didn't raise their hand doesn't know, right? <laughs> So, how many sons did the fathers have two sons, right? The one day, second son said, um, get my, I, I'd like to get my inheritance. So, father was generous enough to give him money before he died. So, he left home and went to faraway country and squandered money. And when he was leaving his father's house, he, his plan was living happily ever after, away from his father. But the story didn't go that way, right? So one day as he was feeding pigs, then he realized that his father loved him so much. So he came back. And he was widely welcomed. And father welcomed and the servants welcomed him. But there's one person who refused to welcome him. Who is it? Yeah, older son. Brother, older brother. He didn't want to welcome him. Because he was not happy to join the party. What is the reason of his refusal to join the party? And he said to the father, you know, even before my brother left house, and even after my brother left your house, I have worked hard so much, but you didn't really treat me like the, your second son who is fond of your whole money. And that was his reason to refuse to join the, the welcoming party. And, um, and the father said, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. So according to this story, the father lost two sons. One son was lost outside of the house, and the other son was lost inside of the house. The first son represents members of the church who are not connected to the body of Jesus Christ. And their future is known by Jesus. And I'm not really um, may, trying to make you to be afraid, but that's what Matthew 7, 21, 23 says. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But... He who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have you not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name, and the many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Then we should know how to join the body of Jesus Christ, right? 
if it's so essential to follow Christ, if it's so essential to be part of the church, then we should know how to join the body of Jesus Christ. And did Jesus tell us about it? If it's a secret, then it should be a problem, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Jesus told us in John 15, and as we read from the scripture, during the scripture reading, Abide in me, and I in you, and the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. It's very clear, right? We cannot do the work of God without joining the vine as a branch. And once he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you abide in me and I in him, and you will bear much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Did you just say something? Did you say like 10 things, 20 things, 100 things? What did Jesus say? Oh, okay. Um, I will read it. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. What did Jesus say? You can do nothing. Does it shock you? No matter how many activities we do, no matter how many events the church organizes, no matter how many baptisms we have, no matter how many evangelical meetings we organize, Jesus said, no, 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 no. If you are not part of my branch, if you are not connected by and in me as a branch, you can do nothing. So Jesus is divine invite to join him as a branch. And if we refuse to join, will be withered and threw into the fire and burnt up. However, if we are joined, we will bear much fruit. What kind of fruit we bear? Apples, mangoes, banana. What kind of fruits? Yeah, fruits of the Holy Spirit. So when we bear fruits of the Holy Spirit, what kind of fruit we bear again? Another kind of fruit? Yeah, when we have those fruits, we, when we bear the fruits of the Holy Spirit, we'll naturally bear the fruits of the saved souls. So, the, one of the reasons that God helps us to bear fruits is to take us to heaven. But He has another purpose. Through the fruits, as we feed fruits that we, we, we bear, in, in, by the Holy Spirit. When we feed the fruits of the Holy Spirit to other people, we save them. And we help them to join the kingdom of God. So that's what we are called for. But those things can be happened, only can be happened when every individual is joined to Christ. Um, then how can we join again? How can you join to the vine? And verse 7, Jesus said, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. So first Jesus said, If you abide in me and I abide in you, now in verse 7, Jesus said, If you abide in me and my words abide in you. The, in other way, if my word abide in you, you are connected to me as a branch. Then how can the word of God abide in us? How can it be happened? We have to meditate, learn, and apply the Word of God through prayer in our daily lives. 
It's a daily, everyday process. It's a daily bread. How often do you eat meals? Three times a day? Some people two times a day? If you are in strict diet, maybe one time a day? Only once a day? But even you skip one meal, you feel hungry, right? And the Word of God, we call it spiritual food. And spiritual food, which meant to be fed every day, as a daily bread, daily rice. Some countries, the bread is not the main food, so daily rice, daily cooked rice, daily bread. So it must, as the, <clears throat> the physical food sustain our physical body, we need to be fed with the spiritual food to sustain our spiritual life. So whenever you feel hungry, you eat physical food. The same way we need to feel hunger of spiritual food. So not only once a day, but it must be carried. The strength of spiritual food must be carried through the day. That's why I pose as a living sacrifice. So it's a daily meditation of the Word of God and memorize the Word of God and apply what Jesus tells us with a prayer. We already have written Word of God, right? But He has, to, he has a word, He has something to tell us to, uh, what to do every day through his written word of God and prayer. That we call, we are servants of the Lord. How many of we are servants of the Lord? If you are servants of the Lord, then servants listen to the Lord before you, you execute your work, daily work. Is that true? Okay, nobody really experienced being a servant, so you. But you have a superior boss in your, right? So if you do not listen to your superior in you know, your workplace and just do whatever you want to do and, and then you will be called to his office then, right? Then you will be out of real work and you need to listen to your boss. So I want to listen to the Lord and that's why we need to listen to Lord, King of Kings as we open the Bible and kneel in prayer. So the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, Jesus can tell us what to do, how to live the day. So dear church family, and spiritually the leaders who are going to dedicate yourself today, and the leaders of lighthouse of the church, you can do lots and lots of work and do service without being connected to the vine. But according to what Jesus said, it will be meaningless. So from uh, today, especially leaders, you will be asked about your devotional life from me. I'm going to ask you how you have a devotional life. And if you do not have a regular devotional life, then I'm going to help you how to have a regular devotional life. Amen. Thank you. And because of that, you know, without being connected with God, then no matter how often we get together and worship and how often we do service, those are meaningless. So we do not want to repeat the meaningless work. So you will be asked whether you have regular devotional life or not. So you would not attempt to the Lord's work without listening from the Lord first to the written of God and prayer. And that's what we are heading for. And since the last year, our church has been providing training for those people who want to learn how to have a devotional life and also be leaders in the church. And in a few weeks, the first generation of the disciple training will be finished. 
And this morning, we are going to listen uh, from them, first generation of disciples, and their testimony, and their vision. And before as they, are pre they prepare, we are going to show a very short video clip. So when they finish the, the training, they are going to launch out, we temporarily call care group. And the care group is different from the regular small group. And it's the, the place that where the new, uh, where the non-believers come and get to know the love of Jesus Christ and eventually get baptized and be a member of the church and be trained uh, to be a next generation leader and the base of that we are going to have um, continue to have this training and continue to organize your care group and um, I personally expect that, that every one of you be participate uh, in this endeavor and so that in the future the disciple training and care group system will be the foundation of our church that's how we take care of each other, and how we evangelize the world. And the reason that I combined then these two today, because as I emphasize that, that without being connected to God, without being trained to have personal devotional life, and being a leader many times is just meaningless. 